Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In today's lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be learning how to design our GUI or graphical user interface for our new app, which is going to be an email client, specifically a Gmail client. We're going to be able to send um, emails to any other email account using a Gmail account. So what we have here is just a um, just a design, which is what we're going to be creating in this tutorial. In the following tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to import into NetBeans, and in the final tutorial, we're going to learn how to actually code up everything to make sure um, that everything is working. So, the first thing that we want to do is we want to open up Photoshop. Now, if you guys don't have Photoshop, I suggest just downloading the trial version, which lasts for like 30 days, or you guys can use any other photo editing tool. Um, they're all going to be sufficient enough for what we're going to be doing. So the first thing that we want to do right now, once you open up Photoshop, is go to File, New, or you can press Control N on your keyboard, and we're going to set a width of 630 and a height of 450. Now this is going to be the size of our app. I've already tested it out, and I think that this is a pretty good size. Now as you guys can see, this is what the size looks like. So we're just going to double click on this background layer to make it um, into a new layer. We're going to click on OK and it's going to make this layer editable. So once we have this, the next thing that we need to do is we need to select our color scheme. So I usually head, of, head on over to um, flaturicolors.com. As you guys can see, there's a URL right there. And I pick from one of the colors on this web page. You guys can see it's grouped into two vertically. So if you go with green, you guys can choose a foreground color of this screen and a background color of this screen. So it, it, it matches up the colors really nicely. So for this specific tutorial, we're going to go with green sea and turquoise. And in order to get the colors, you're going to click on choose format on the top. You're going to click on hex 1234EF. And now you can click on any color that you want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on green sea. And you guys can see it automatically copies it to our clipboard. So once we're in Photoshop, we're just going to click on any one of these two, um, these two colors right here. By default, it's usually black and white. So I'm going to click on the top one, the foreground color. And I'm going to head up this hex code right here. I'm just going to double click, press Control V. And as you guys can see, um, this is our green sea color. Now once we have green tea, we're just going to click on this arrow here. This arrow that's got um, uh, the arrows on both sides, or whatever it's called, I don't know what it's called. Um, and we're going to go back into flatuicolors.com and we're going to choose turquoise. Then we're just going to click on it. And then once again, control V and that'll be inserted. And as you guys can see, we have two different colors going on. So I'm going to go with the darker color. As you guys can see, we have the darker color set as the background. And then I'm simply just going to click on this paint bucket tool. Um, it might also be the gradient tool for you, so it depends. You just want to right click on it, choose paint bucket tool, and we're just going to click and as you guys can see, it fills up the entire color with the green sea color. So once we have that, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create this little bar on the top. And it's very simple to do that. We're going to choose the rectangular marquee tool, which is right here. So we just want to click on it and we just want to click and drag whatever reasonable size you like. And as you guys can see, a dotted moving line appears. Now, once you have that, you're going to uh, click on this double-sided arrow and it's going to move our background color to the foreground, which is a nice turquoise color. Then we're just going to grab the paint bucket tool and fill it in once again. Now, to get rid of this um, dotted line, you're going to press Control D for deselect and it hides that, um, hides that dotted line. Then you're going to press T on your keyboard, T for text. And then we're just going to add the X on the top right hand side corner. So you just want to click anywhere on the top right hand corner, shift X. And as you guys can see, um, it, it writes the X for us. Now you might want to change the color. So you just want to click on this and you guys can change it to any color which you like. I'm going to go with white because I think that looks really nice. And we're just going to place it roughly on the top right hand corner. It doesn't need to be perfect because um, you won't really notice it at 100%. But there we go. You guys can see that we've created our frame, our frame bar, which is this bar on the top right here. And we've also created the X so we can actually close our application. Now that we have that, the next thing that we want to do is we want to create these um, these rounded rectangles for where we type in our text. And it's very simple to do so. We're going to click on this um, little icon on the bottom left hand corner on this taskbar, this toolbar it's called, just below this um, colored in cursor. Now you might need to right click and then select the rounded rectangle too. So I'm going to go with the radius of 8 pixels, which basically means that the curve on um, the side of the rectangle or the edge of the rectangle is going to be 8 pixels um, as a radius. So once you have that, you guys just want to click and drag. Um, no, my cat. Um, you guys just want to click on the fill and you want to select this color right here. So if you guys just simply uh, move these around, it usually uh, picks up your most chosen color. So we're going to go with turquoise as our color. And then all we're simply going to do is just click and drag to any size that we 
feel is fine. So I'm going to go with the size that's about that big. And there you go. You guys can see we've created that. Now the next thing to do is to centralize this. And an easy way to do so is to click on layer 0, which is our background layer. You're going to press Control alt uh, r sorry, Control r for ruler. And it's going to bring up the rulers on the top and left hand side of the screen. Then we're simply just going to click and drag and it'll automatically snap to the middle. When you get... Hey, when you get roughly in the center of it, it's going to snap to the middle. And you guys can do that for the this horizontal one as well, but it's not really necessary. So now what you want to do is you just want to move this arrow key. And you want to move the rounded rectangle to somewhere in the center and bring that up. Then we, once again, we're going to use the text tool and we're going to type in 2. And that's going to be to whom you send your mail to. And once again, you guys can change the color. I'm going to change it to white. Click on OK. And that looks pretty good to me. Now what we want to do is we just want to zoom in here and we want to make it um, aligned to the left edge. So what we can do is we can click on our rounded rectangle in our layers menu, click and drag a ruler out until it snaps. And then we can just shift the two message or sorry, the two, um, two text over to the left. And there we go. You guys can see it's nicely aligned. So now what we want to do is we just want to uh, copy and duplicate this by pressing control with the rounded rectangle one and also control holding it down press on our text, right click, duplicate layers. And then all we're going to do is we're going to shift it down and then edit the two to say CC for carbon copy. And there you guys go. You guys can see what um, what it looks like when you have the two and the CC. Now the last thing that we need to do in terms of the text boxes is to add the message text box, which is basically the same process as what we did for the very first rectangle. So I'm just going to copy uh, CC and change it to message and then draw out our big rectangle. So what we're going to do is we just want to um, copy our CC and rounded rectangle, uh, the second rounded rectangle we made, duplicate the layers, and we're just going to drag it down, and there we go. Now what you guys will notice is that we can't really make this rounded rectangle bigger without um, destroying the corners. So a simple way to make it larger is to just simply create a new one. So you just want to apply the transformation. Um, we just want to simply click and drag. And you guys will see that it'll have some sort of snapping um, motion to it. So you can snap it nicely. And there we go. And once you have that, we can delete the second, the third rounded rectangle that we created. So now it is gone. Then all we want to do is we're going to change um, the CC right here to say message. And then we are almost done. The last thing that we want to do is just want to add the send button. So the way that we can do this is drag a ruler out to the edge. Now you guys will notice that it won't actually snap. That's because you have to have it um, snapping to a specific layer. So we can select any one of our rectangles that we've created and then just move it out to the edge and it'll automatically snap to the edge of all of them because all of them are the same size. Then lastly, we're just going to click on our round rectangle tool once again. And we're just going to add a button roughly, I would say, about that big. I'm just going to move mine down a few pixels and then we're going to zoom in by holding down alt and then uh, scrolling with your mouse wheel. And then I'm simply going to choose the text tool once again and I'm going to type in send. I'm going to change the size by highlighting all the text and I'm going to go with something like, uh, oh my bad, something like maybe a 13 point font. That looks good to me. Then once again we're just going to centralize this. There we go. Zoom out and as you guys can see, this is what your final product looks like. Now, I'm not really happy with where the send button is, so I'm just going to shift this up. I know at the beginning I said I'm going to shift it down, but I think that looks a lot better. So now you guys can see we've created um, something not really perfect, not exactly the same, but something very similar to what we made earlier. So I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to save this as a PNG and call it email underscore sender click on save now you guys have two compression methods you can either go with none um, if you go with a no compression method then what happens is that it becomes fast to save it but your file size is also bigger if you go with the smallest compression method you get a very small um, output size but it also takes longer to to happen but really it doesn't make a difference so we're just going to go with smallest slash slow and it's going to save it to wherever you chose to save it and you guys can see that even that we chose the most compression, um, you guys will notice that there's really no there's really no noticeable difference um, between this and no compression, which is what we see here. And also what we notice that it's only 16.1 kilobytes, so it ends up saving um, 
saving space in your installer and stuff like that. So you guys can go ahead and save this as a PN, uh, PSD if you want to. So go to File, Save As, and you guys can save it as a PSD if you want. So, okay guys, so that's it for this tutorial. If you did enjoy it, please don't forget to leave us a like, comment, and subscribe. I am trying something new. If you guys don't like this type of format, please let me know. Um, basically, for those of you who don't really know what, what we're trying to do, is we're basically trying to create the GUI first, then we go over how to import it into the next tutorial, and then lastly, we actually do the coding and uh, final steps to make your you make your working application. There's been a lot of people who've complained about um, uh, not knowing how to import images and stuff like that. So I just want to try this out and uh, let me know what you guys think. If you think it's uh, better, if you think it's worse, whatever it may be. I also want to apologize for not making tutorials for a while. I did get run over while I was crossing the road um, outside my campus to get to my car. I was hit by a minibus, so I was in hospital for a while, and uh, I missed a lot of days of school, a few weeks of school, so I've been catching up, writing tests and exams, and uh, that's the reason why there's been very few tutorials and why many of you haven't heard from me in a while. So anyways, guys, I just want to thank you again for watching, and stay tuned for the next tutorial, which will be up in the next day or two. Thanks.